part of my search is l- l- searching for purpose. Mm-hmm. And and that's been, you know, a lifelong goal. And com- it's also been very confusing because, you know, people, the way people speak of purpose, sometimes it's often related to career or, you know, sort of divine mission. Some people say it's, it's, it's what you truly love to do. Like it's all over the place. So I feel like it's something I'm always chasing. And it's, I, I think also because there's not a, it's not consistently, things aren't consistently a yes. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, welcome to another episode of Holin Unleashed. Today, I'm excited to share an expansion session. It was recorded last year around March, April 2023. And this person wrote to me about navigating through some transitions, quitting their job, applying for disability, and trying to find some clarity around the next steps of their lives as they integrate the awareness they have about themselves and their needs and trying to get more clarity on purpose, direction, career. And this guest is a manifesting generator. They're a four six split definition with a lot of definition in their chart. The only center they have undefined is the solar plexus. So someone that's really here to move around almost like in their own beat, connecting to different people. And we talk about what it means to connect to their sacral response. We talk about the gate of depth, their channel 4816, their relationship with their spleen and fears. We also talk about the limitations of our minds sometimes. As colorful and useful it is, it is also limited, which leads to their defined head and ajna definition. They have a consistent energy there and anybody with a defined head and ajna or even defined ajna is i tell my clients you know your brain wants to be stimulated wants to munch on things and learning about like the different kinds of stimulation can be quite useful we also talk about the collective energy how sometimes we might turn certain energies inwards when it's really not meant for that. But instead, how can we create the space to share, to share with the collective? That's what it's meant for. We also tap into their large split definition, their 4521, their community energy, how her desires show what her community needs. And, you know, we also talk about starting a business how could she approach it from part-time to jumping in full-time a lot of different approaches there and also we tap on the fear of being seen especially as a manifesting generator someone who is seen as a leader as well but also the fear of being seen for the things we're passionate about that can be quite vulnerable and I think I already said that there are four six. They're about to come off the roof. So anybody who has a six profile or curious in general about the different stages and want to hear from someone who's about to also come off that roof, the energy that is driving them, make sure you tune in and here's the episode. Go deep into like what I really want. I applied for unemployment and doing all these things. And so there's all these hoops that I have to jump through just to maintain that. Um, And then, you know, and of course, unemployment, their whole thing is to get you working. Uh, And then, so I have to ask myself this question, like, do I really want another job or am I want to, you know, work with my sort of entrepreneurship and like start a business or do multiple business 
experiences and just and, and what they really what it, what I really want. So I'm looking for like more truth in my story so that I can, you know, go for something that I actually want. Mm-hmm. Um, because getting a job right now, the part of it, every time I think about it, I'm like, oh my God, it sounds horrible. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you know, having having money come in sounds good. Um, and you know, having, you know, like so yeah, I, I'm teeter tottering on that because you know, of course it depends on the job. If it's yeah. a job that aligns with me, I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. But if it's just another job where I just overwork myself and you know, blah, 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 some of the old stories, then you know, I'm gonna be in the same situation that I've been in. So I'm just trying to really get that up and out and you know been asking like sacred questions and generative generative questions to kind of like let it out more because you know so that I'm not in the shoulds because I know like I've already trained myself if it's a should that means no to me I don't want to do what I should do I don't like that but what what am I choosing and what what do I have the energy to sort of be be consistent at doing like you know starting a business it takes a lot of work but everything takes a lot of work mm-hmm. but if I'm going to be happy or doing that in the long run because I'm more uh defined and you know of my choosing and then energy like I started this new eating plan so my energy like the last couple of weeks has been a little lower as I adjust to it you know mm-hmm. so yeah so just trying to consider all that stuff and what it means and you know really I just feel like I need to keep figuring it out but also take the time I need to to figure it out and not try and rush it yeah right 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 thank you for setting the (laughs) the background of it of everything that you're holding because a transition in itself it demands a huge energetic shift in us it takes us out of a comfort zone so you have this tension of like oh do I want to go back to my job and it seems like if I ask that to your body before your mind even jumps, like, what is your body telling you? If I say, do you want to go back to your job? Mm-mm. To a job. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could feel it even when you were talking about it. But yeah. then the mind comes in and because we want certainty, we want safety. And that's such a human thing. We want to make sure we can take care of ourselves. And it tells you there is certainty in a full-time job. And then your body's like, Mm-mm. but then there's also the uncertainty of, What if I start my business? What's going to happen? So how do we hold that? Because either two options are not certain. It takes a lot of energy to keep a business, run a business. It also takes a lot of energy to commit to a job that does not make you happy. It's going to drain you. And the sacral wants to be poured into a container, something that can nourish itself back. That's how the sacral reveals itself. And Mm -hmm. sometimes the uncertainty is scary, but will that give it the opportunity to try things to, oh, let me try to do something that I'm passionate about and see what comes back. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the whole like sort of way to respond, there's a way to respond. And there's also the right work and there's, you know, not jumping onto something just because it's, it, it fills the need or it, it fills a need or, you know, t- ticks the box. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, like my theme very much so is trust right now. That's all I can do. It's like, I just need to trust the process of life and myself. And that if I, you know, I've taken this leap and that if I stick to it, something better will come. And, you know, and I'm, really open to co-creating it and not sitting back and waiting for it to happen and I'm looking and being aware yeah but you know like you know some days are better some minutes are better than others yes definitely definitely and it's I think trust we think about it as something almost static like I trust myself cool but then there will be moments and tests where our trust is going to be challenged so how do we keep cultivating that trust how do we you know for days that are harder how do we still stay grounded in ourselves and say yeah this feels good for my body and i trust something will come so how do you take care of yourself in those days where it feels a little bit harder what do you usually do you know continuing to ask questions like like poking holes at it being curious about it like you know, is this true? You know, like asking those questions to 
the situation to myself and to the situation. I'm very intuitive, so that helps. And then looking at what I want and looking like, does that even fill the need? You know, like this is coming up, but what is what is true? Uh, and, you know, doing sometimes doing movements or breath work or meditation on it or journaling. Mm-hmm. Like those are all tools I use. But, and then just, you know, and just like being in a state of love and being open helps me quite a bit. And just like, you know, like, so what if I trust? Like, what if I just like, what if I just trust this? And, and even though it's freaking me out in this moment or I, yeah. I, just, I don't know the true answer, what if I just trust? Yeah. You know, like that, because that's my theme, you know, you yeah. know, sometimes I'll pull an Oracle card or different stuff to kind of help. Um, Reinforce that energy almost. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It does wonder, you know. So yeah. if we take the trust theme and move it towards, you said one of your options is starting a business or, you know, you have this entrepreneur spirit. Do you want to explore that a little bit more? How does that sure. look like? Yeah. I like, I've always had like side businesses that, you know, through the time I was working, I opened a store for a while. I do energy healing and, and, you know, coaching, teaching on the side always. I'm always learning different modalities and work with people. I make jewelry and sell it. So I've always had things on the side that, because it was very important to me that I have something that I have creative say in. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm here. So I would say like when I decided to leave my job, I was like, okay, like, yes, I feel like it's ready. Like what things can I do so that I don't feel like I'm lost? It's like, well, I could freelance doing the things that I was doing work I'm not quite ready for that yet um but I could freelance doing other things and I could you know I could sell make more jewelry and sell it to more stores or do stuff like that or okay I could I could work on my healing and coaching business and right now I'm in the coaching taking a coaching course to um enhance my skills and get them into present time. So I'm doing these things, but you know, like I, you know, I have that what 41, 21, is it 21 and two gate? I can't uh remember. 45, 21, the the channel that connects the heart to the throat. Well, yeah, but I'm thinking about the 48. The 40, yes, 48, 16. Yes. Let me, let me share your chart so you can also okay. uh 4816, yes. And that 48, that spleen sort of fear energy. I mean, I've experienced that pretty hardcore. Yeah, I've, I've, I've experienced that quite hardcore in my life. And now, you know, reading more about it and learning about it helps kind of put it in pr- perspective and realizes that, yeah, that that might come up. But I still, you know, through my whole life, I've always like acknowledged my fears, but just walk past them. It's like, you know, I used to always joke and go like, hey, fear. Yeah, I see you there. You're looking really menacing today. <laughs> Keep going, you know. But, you know, like all the things you know and learn, sometimes in the given moment, you forget because something has your attention. But sooner or later, I come back to it and go like, oh, yeah, remember, I'm going to not do that. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to keep walking. It's uh, almost also changing your your beliefs and how you approach yourself, right? When we learn about this, it's like, oh, we are designed this way, or this is a natural part of me. Oh, yeah. I'm going to feel a lot of melancholy in this energy. So how do I hold myself when it happens? Because we don't go by like, oh, you know, this is our not self and then switch. Like mentally, we can't switch like this because our entire body is like, what is happening? So knowing that, you know, the channel of the wavelength, you know, the the gate of death with the gate of skills. You have a lot of death that gets developed when you allow yourself to practice, to get lost in the skills, to develop them. But the inadequacy of not knowing enough might prevent you from even trying. And then as an MG manifesting generator, you will want to try a lot of different things. And that's okay. You might want to do something for an hour today and then not touch it for a few weeks. And then you might be pulled. That's your sacred actually guiding you like, try this, try this. And I think the biggest difference between a manifesting generator and a generator is that the manifesting generator, their life force wants to go to more places. 
it was like, let me try this, let me try this. And then it kind of like sits back, watches, and then it goes back to re-engage with the things that feels that felt good and wants to keep pouring their sacro to a generator. They might find one thing they really enjoy, different things, and they just they have a very thorough, they're, they want to go through it like every step of the way while an MG, it's like, let me try this, maybe skip a step ahead. Let me skip five steps and then I'll come back to it as I get more data. You know, their process is slightly different. So really allowing yourself to <laughs> like surrender to the process. It sounds so cheesy and what does it mean, right? But it really is like your process wants to try something and then notice when your mind or other parts of you are triggering the shadow aspects that we have been conditioned by society. Like stick to one thing. You should finish one thing before you go to something else or who are you to start something? Like you don't know enough, you know, all those <sighs> conditioning <laughs> that yeah. we have all experienced it's almost like it's in the subconscious of our brain so really learning oh this is showing up in this moment how do I hold this I feel very inadequate but I also have this trust that is guiding me like I can feel your divine identity so I'm just like I trust myself but then the not self or the shadow expression is like but but do you, <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> but do you, how much do you trust? And then if you just surrender to the energy of like, okay, this feels fun. How can I just keep following the fun? And I know my brain is trying to make sense of how can I create certainty from that? How can I create, you know, the steps to support myself, which is very important, but your mind doesn't really know because our minds gather facts from what we've seen people do. And a lot of what we're doing is not like our journey, our path, our timing is so different than others. They can inspire us. You know, when you see people that picked up a different career at like 60, 70, you're like, oh my gosh, that can be inspiring. Yeah. Their path is different. Your conditioning is different. So the mind, when it tries to make sense of this based on facts, will get very overwhelmed because it's like, I don't know how to connect the pieces. But if you can focus instead of, okay, the mind is going to munch on things, especially with your defined um, head and um, mind. You are going through periods of confusion, <laughs> realization, confusion, realization, and like, you know, it drives you. But this energy is not meant to be applied to your own life. This is a collective energy, the 64, 47, wow. the channel of abstraction. abstraction. It's really about making sense of your own experiences and sharing with the collective. You know, what you're going through right now, I'm sure that when you're ready to coach, if you're ready to coach, <laughs> that wisdom will support the people that are seeking your guidance because you've been through it. And that's what the energy is really for. But sometimes we turn the energy inwards to think, are we good enough? Even your 4816, that's a collective energy. That's skills for you to practice so you can serve and share with the collective. But we turn it inwards. Oh, are we good enough? Do we have the skills? So much of it is, so many of our skills are honed when we start doing it. But there is some bumps along the road. So we recognizing those bumps can help us get over them. Yeah, yeah that's really good information. Just uh, stating like, yeah, more of a, collective channel or skill versus an internal because yeah I tend to of course you know especially as a woman internalize everything you yes know? I was gonna say that I'm like as a woman <laughs> yeah. we like, were oh, trained <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah that's that actually is really helpful yeah yeah and one more thing to note is that your head and mind it's not directly connected to your throat so you sharing that might not always come easy to you. Like you have all that energy here that, you know, sometimes with the transit with certain people, you'll be able to share eloquently. It comes easy, but it's not something you're here to do all the time. And when we're trying to make sense of our lives and we want to express it even to ourselves, like, what are we trying to do without that direct connection to your throat? You might always feel like something's missing. Why can't I figure things out? But that's because you're not meant to, unless somebody needs you to help them figure something else. That's a different energy, right? Yeah, yeah. So question. So I see, yes. Yeah, so, I, and I've been thinking about that because, because I'm like a, a large split. Mm -hmm. Now, if I, would it make sense for me to really 
delve into like either the 17, 13, 11, 62, 23, 50, three to see what their sort of attributes are and so to somehow bring those into more of my consciousness to really work with them more so that I'm a little bit more connected. Mm-hmm. I so think you don't have to unless you are very fascinated and curious. So the intention behind it, I think that's what matters. Some people learn human design because, you know, they want to support themselves. Other times we learn human design because we think it's going to fix <laughs> the things that, you know, the insecurity we're feeling. So my yeah, the way yeah. I approach human design is always like your chart is perfect as it is. You being a split does not mean you need to compensate for the energies that you don't have rather than learning about, oh, my process as a split means I have an area that is like below my mind from my throat all the way down that's processing information on its own timing. And then I have my head and mind that is also processing information. So it takes some time for both of those areas to align. Doesn't mean I need to go above and beyond. You know how they always ground it to follow your strategy and authority as like the holy grail. But that's also because your strategy authority is really just connecting you to your body. And when you go to places that you enjoy or activities, events, when you connect with the people in your life that gives you a sense of safety, that is honoring that energy. And then inherently, you might pull in people that have the other energies that you don't have and help you connect or make sense of yourself. Yeah. So it's almost like, the more you honor yourself, the less you have to try to find the pieces you feel like you're missing because you're not missing it. It's just you're not here to express all that energy all the time. Your skills is to, you know, share your desires. What do you want for your community? Your 45, 21, you know, your desires have the ability to impact your community, but you really have to lean into that and lean into your desire start doing the things that are important to you and people might start popping up say hi what are you doing <laughs> what's the jewelry you're designing what what are you coaching you no know, this is the energy of bring being able to show your community what material success could be like or what is you know what is the safety what do they need in this material realm and you have this energy but first you need to connect with your inner desires Like, you know, not the full-time job does not feel good to my body. What feels good? And the mind is going to interject with like, but you don't have certainty, but you're just like, thank you. Thank you, mind right now. Let me just go into dreamland. You know, let me let the feel good in my body. So if we try that, like right now, you said that you have all these businesses, how would it feel to start your day with the hobbies or doing something that you enjoy? What is the part of you that brings you the most joy? Yeah, like I, I think starting in from November until February, I was doing, well, first I was doing a lot of, a lot more jewelry for the holidays and then went into art because I had all these shows that I was submitting for and in, and, 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 you know, it was, it's great when I, I feel good when I'm doing my own thing, you know, like, and you have those moments of, you know, creating, co-creating and making something that you feel good about and that you want to share with the world it's it's a great feeling and you know because you know I I am a multitasker and I sometimes it helps I do jump around and do a lot of things so having that those components creating something art jewelry whatever film whatever and then doing something that also maybe is more mental also Mm -hmm. helps also so a little bit of both and so you know yeah like yeah having a maybe a a part-time something a base steady of something and doing my businesses sounds good I mean I like coaching because I mean really working with people is it it, I, I love doing it it feels good to me and I enjoy it and I'm good at it when I do it um especially with the energy healing and I think learning the coaching too will just like enhance all of that so it's interesting because often I will say I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know because that confusion is always there like I don't I don't exactly know what I want to be doing 
maybe what I'm really saying is I don't know what it really looks like out in the world, but yeah, I mean, it feels good. It feels good for me to be creative. It feels good for me to work with people. Those things like in this moment, I can say, yes, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea of having like the option of having something like a part-time job, which still gives you the freedom and flexibility to pursue your other interests could be a safe stepping stone right now. Because I think yeah. it's so overwhelming for anybody who's starting their business to say, dive, you know, head on and have nothing. We still need that sense of security, like our nervous system. We still need to make sense of the material world as much as we trust something will come. I think, you know, we still need to be responsible with our choices, right? And it's a little balance. And maybe that little step of like getting a part-time job and then having the time so you feel more stable a little bit more stable and then have the time to explore the things can give you actually can open more portals of creativity and then you start to see more options and then you can make you know clearer decisions of like oh I can respond to more things versus at the beginning when we're already in a state of slight overwhelm and like there's fear and it's normal because you know we need to pay the bills we need money to survive in this world so how can we regulate that does it feel supportive right now to think about oh, okay, a part-time job can be manageable and you get to meet people that who knows might be able to, might lead to another chapter when you do start sharing, diving more into your interests. Yeah, what's interesting is, you know, so being on unemployment now, it, it's its own work. Like I got selective to, you know, I this re, re, Reemployment assessment program they decided that I'm a candidate for so you know I have an interview on Thursday for them you know I you know I updated my resume and put it on there and you know they sent me you know a questionnaire thing and then you know with employment anyway you know you have to like look for jobs and send it in you know but it's it's really interesting because you know when I was doing my resume like it doesn't fit into their categories you know it's it's somewhat nuanced it's like yeah you know and so the types of jobs that sometimes people send me are I'm like no you're not getting what I the industry that I was in and mm-hmm. and more importantly I don't want to do the same thing mm-hmm. so I'm hoping or I'm looking into one of the things they offer if people are in this program is uh, trainings. And so I thought, well, if there's an opportunity for me to like take the training and, and that will enhance what I actually want to do at this point, something like, even if it's a part-time or full-time position that's in the workforce, that is, could get me some foundation of skills, that would be great. But if they're just going to just try and ship, you know, shove me into any job that they think matches my resume, then, you know, it might be a challenge. So yeah. you know, I'm looking, once I talk to them, I'll kind of get an idea like what's available to me. But, you know, it definitely brings some anxiety. It's like, because their job is you have to get you just reemployed. And I'm like, well, I understand that, but it's got to be the right work. That's one thing I've learned, especially yes. with design. It's got to be the right work. I was just about to ask you, I'm like, do they force you to take any job that they offer or you have a say in it if you don't feel like you're the right fit? Well, I think because look, when you certify, you, you know, they ask these questions like, you know, are you able to work? Were you sick or anything like that? And then also, did it? Did anyone offer you a position? Did you turn down a position that was mm-hmm. offered to you? So they ask all these questions, and they all—I mean, I'm sure you can talk your way out of any of them. You know, but it's just—it's more conversation. Like you have to be accountable, accountable to them about all of those things. Mm-hmm. So it's—it's—it's it's, it's its own like stress-causing like annoyance versus I'm- like. Because I thought, well, God, should I have just not even applied yet and waited till I really like wait, wait it later to do it and first done either the entrepreneurial things or done like freelance or task rabbit or some gig working stuff mm-hmm. uh, first, because, you know, like what, but my thought was like, I just wanted a little bit more time Yeah, is why I did it. But now I'm thinking, oh, should I have 
weighted, but you know, who knows? So, yeah. I'm, you know, considering all of those things, because I'm like, you know, worst case scenario of like, if they're like, you know what, no, we're kicking you off unemployment, then I'll, then I'll just do other things, you know, like yeah. freelance and do other things. But I, I was feeling like I just needed a little bit more time. Yeah. So time to figure it out or yeah. time to rest or time to rest and figure it out because, you know, from November to like I said, February, we're just so busy. Like I was working and creating and wheeling and dealing and all of these things that it was exhausting, but it was, you know, I was doing my thing. So, you know, I just let, I was still, but I was, you know, not, you know, getting like five or six hours of sleep a night, <laughs> you know, kind of back to my over, over workaholic kind of self, right. but it felt good because I was doing it for myself. But so, yeah, I was exhausted. So I did want some more time just to like be still and, and let more out. And then because once I started doing this, I start shifting my eating because, you know, that was I need to do that for my health. My energy level was lower because I'm eating less and eat, le- eating just certain foods. And so I was like, OK, well, I have to just so I've been sleeping more, you know, which has been good. And and just trying to sort of weave weave my foundation so it's a little stronger and 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 with you know healthier habits for myself you know sleeping more drinking more water eating better because I just I got off track basically and it you know it was it was bad you know I was like binge eating like bad food and. But, I, but it was like, you know, but it's comfort food. It's comforting. It's, yeah, you know, yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to take that step. This is what I need to do in the moment. And then when I can change, I change. And so like starting like March 1st, so it's only been what, 14 days now, but I've been eating really clean and, yeah. you know, it definitely, my energy is different and yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then like between dental and some medical stuff that I'm dealing with. Yeah. Which is wanting to to be you know like there's no there's no guarantee that's gonna anything is gonna be successful but to me part of being successful is just doing it like once I align with like I'm just working to align with a big yes Mm -hmm. I this is where I want to put my energy at the moment our energies because you know (laughs) who I am these things are how I'm gonna do it and then go for it. But I haven't even been able to get to that point yet. Yeah. And so I was hoping to have more time to like get there and, you know, create lists, work on like a plan of, of action. It's just amazing how easy it is to fill your days. There's just so much to do. And there's Oh, yes. But when we're trying to, it's, I was just about to ask you about your foundations because you're a four six. And how much do you know about your profile? Yeah, well, I know it's the role model and the opportunistic. Mm-hmm. Which they have, opportunist. I guess, opportunist, yes. And so I I get the 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 six more, you know, the three levels, you know, mm-hmm. different stages of life. And the opportunist, I for me, I feel like it shows up like I have so many ideals that come to me. Mm-hmm. And I have a, a interesting way of, I can like, for myself and for other people, I can monetize things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like see like how it can sort of be put out there. It just sort of comes to me, mm-hmm. especially when I have something to respond to. Like if someone throws stuff at me or tells me their situation, it just like, oh, we could do this, this, and this. And it sometimes yeah. overwhelm people <laughs> helping them with their ideals because they're like, oh, oh, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, but, yeah. So those are, those are some of the ways it shows up. It shows up, and then you know. So now the age that I'm I'm at, I am looking for interesting ways to like take the energy and information and knowledge and, and all of these things that I do have and put it out there. And so I like a lot lately, I've been really like, you know, I've always wanted to write a book. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what the subject would be, maybe, or I'll say books. Mm-hmm. And I thought, one, 
one could just be telling a part of my story and and I always because I used to always want to do like an animation film or comics or different different things but I I've always wanted to tell stories more Mm -hmm. and looking at like ways that could come out you know I also love poetry I was used to write a lot and then I stopped because I because of that I think that whole spleen thing I got very paranoid Mm. about it being seen and I don't know if it was a, a particular situation I was in that that brought that up and so lately I've just got back into just journaling and using different prompts Mm -hmm. Um, but I haven't been able to yet to go as deep and like take it into like a story I can just write on like the prompt and then kind of go go, yeah Yeah. well the thing about responding is you the sacral always needs more data for things to respond to you know you have this desire right this is your heart desire I want to write a book then it's going to respond to more things to come so you get more energy to pour into it and writing it that's an you know a very simplified example of like the sacral and responding so you need more data you need more interactions you need more I guess opportunities for you to respond like okay I want to do this I want to do this you know but sometimes we just stay in our little bubble and the reason I mentioned profile is because the four six opportunist role model for the fourth line this is a very externalizing energy and they need foundations similar to the first line they are the foundations of you know the entire <laughs> all the profiles of six numbers, you know, they're very strong and sturdy. They go through periods of introspection, investigation to make sure that, have you heard about the house analogy in profiles? Like on the roof, you mean? Yeah, yeah, on the roof. And then the first floor, second floor, or how the energies move with each other. The fourth one is on the second floor. And it's basically here to look for opportunities. Like, what can I do now? And the opportunities happen through their network, their people, their relationships. So having a solid foundation for you is likely to look like certain friends or people you can go to. And then your sixth has an externalizing energy as well to share your wisdom. You need people in order to recognize you so you can share your wisdom. And that's such a core part of your design. You know, we can learn about all your channels, define head, undefined. But the four six, knowing that your foundation to be around people, the right people, is so important for you. It's almost, we talk about food as nourishment and all those changes you're doing are super important energy-wise. But have you ever noticed in the past, whenever you've engaged with someone, a friend, how did the after conversation felt? Did it feel nourishing? Like when you have the right connections, you're energetically charged. Yeah. So for the fourth, it's really important. Your foundation, how does it look like right now? What is community for you? Yeah, yeah. And it, and, and it has changed so much since, you know, I, I left a company that I've been working at for years. So I'm, you know, I'm not engaging with people the same daily. And now, you know, it's, you know, like I'll go for walks with friends or, but it's definitely way more isolating because I don't have like the built-in outlet of work. Mm-hmm. That's definitely one of the the um, the pros of work. And I've been, it's funny, like actually when I woke up this morning, one of my thoughts was, what if I just got like, what if we created like a mastermind group and we just started I was I was thinking of, of this one topic and we just like all these I know all these really smart people what if I we just got together and just like brainstormed ways to figure this out mm-hmm. and I've been each time I talk to somebody especially like there you know there's a handful of us that are ex-employees from this company and you know gotten together at different times and I'm like first I was like I would love to get us all together and maybe look at new business models or something that we can all do. Like we're so smart and creative, like what can we do together? So I have been thinking about that 
that's the fourth energy of recognizing opportunities and also sort of the glue. You get to connect people to each other, to yourself. So your inner circle, that community, those relationships are so important for you to be able to externalize and move your energy, right? You're here to share all that wisdom that you have with the right people not to anyone, everyone to the right people. And if you already feel like you have a core of people that are, you know, excited to jump into it, try it out. As you try, as you de develop your skill, your 16th, as you get more data for your sacred to respond to, you will get more ideas. You'll get more clarity on what you want to do more of. We're trying yeah. to take a little bit more of action here because yeah. let's say that previously at your job, you had a foundation of people and now leaving that job, that foundation needs to be rebuilt almost. And it's terrifying for a four, six to not have that kind of foundation. If anything, it, it makes our energy sometimes stunted. It's almost like, how can I externalize my wisdom? But then because you're in the second phase as a sixth sign, you're also kind of very tired. You just want to rest. You're kind of recovering from the first 30 years of your life. And now you're like making sense of everything that's happened. So you're, you're on the roof right now you're about to come down the roof which is you know maybe exactly why right now you're feeling all these things that you want to go out there you want to interact with people more you know because you're in the beginning of coming down your roof of resting of recovering of having integrated your lessons and you're like I'm ready to come down as a role model the role model needs people to role model too right <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah another thought is like you know with my energy healing I I've been talking about doing like group gatherings for for quite a while and you know it's like oh like maybe just once a week once every two weeks whatever just like offer it up people can call in we could do some you know some work together but yeah it is important I mean luckily like because I have my classes a couple of classes that I'm taking that's where my outlets come most of the time because we'll have little pods and and then we'll do people we can do things on the side so I've been reaching out to more people to to do you know either study groups or practice groups and and that's that's been really great and it does feel like oh god I have an opportunity to make new friends because that's, I've been needing to do that for a long time because I find I I don't even I don't really reach out to my my actual friend friends circle of friends I mean I, I do for like walks or if there's social happenings but kind of giving up on them a little <laughs> right I totally understand you because for my core group of friends they probably barely know anything about what I do <laughs> and it's fine right. because we relate in other ways and I know they're not super spiritual even my husband I sometimes I talk human design like off <laughs> he's like oh, okay he's kind of like I'm listening to you because I respect you but also I have no idea what you're talking about so finding a community or groups of people that really felt good to me physically, not just mentally, because I've also been in groups where I'm like, oh, entrepreneurship, oh, a lot of business owners, I can learn. You know, it felt so good on paper in my head. But every time I went to those spaces physically online, I just felt this contraction like, oh, these are not your people. And I stayed there for a little bit because I was convinced that was what, you know, that would be my foundation until I kind of you know, accidentally fell into other groups. And I'm like, oh, community does it say exist. It can be easy if I allow myself to open up to the people that feel good to me versus what look good on paper, what my mindset, hey, this will help you get from A, B, C, D to Z. So yeah. part of the fourth is like, be very picky about the people that you like. like. You see opportunities in a lot of things. Doesn't mean all those opportunities need to be followed. Remember, strategy and authority, you know, waiting for the rest of our energy to align. And I often think about like the slot machine. It's almost waiting. Okay, sacral. Okay, our minds and everything's like, okay, there's enough energy. Go. This is what we're waiting for. We're all waiting, even for a manifester, ego manifestors. They're here to manifest things out of will. They still have to wait for their energy, their creative urge built up in order to release. Otherwise, if they're just manifesting out of their, if it's a great idea, they want to create it. They don't have the energy to do that either. Mm. every type needs to wait but it looks different for us yeah yeah 
I feel like really, you know, it's like, look, go where, go for what fuels you like that are, you know, like it's like fuels you feels good. You know, you can use those interchangeable because that's where the energy is. And you, I want you know, you, you know, like, you know, in all the movies, they're like, follow the money. But in human design, you follow the energy. <laughs> yes, the energy that resonates with you, right? Because somebody else can find, you know, in the groups that I was not right for, they found so much success. They were so happy. Yeah. That's just, it wasn't my energy. So yeah, in the fourth line, you get to be, there's a friendliness energy to it because you're here to externalize. You see opportunities, people see opportunities in you. Sometimes you could get easily exhausted by people you don't resonate with and you're spending time with them out of politeness. They call it the friendliness fatigue. <laughs> and you're like, oh, you know, recognizing that. And maybe that's a sign of like, okay, perhaps that's not your person. How can you politely say, <laughs> like not to cut things off. I think that's a dilemma we experience as fourth lines. We want to be friends with everyone. But very few people are our people. Yeah. Yeah. You're not a mean person. <laughs> I've had to tell myself that. I'm like, it's just yeah. energy resonates or not. Yeah. I had a question about like, so, you know, I I am highly defined and which, you know, you could use the word stuck and I wouldn't blink. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 you know, but have, it's slow to change at times um mm -hmm. is how it comes out with me it's, um and there are times where I felt stuck in situations um but I would just say slow to change um yeah slow to change in what sense it just takes me a while to change you know like you know I've, I've been wanting to quit my job for 10 years or you know like I moved in July, but you know, it'd been like two years or so of me thinking, I, you know what, if I want to quit my job, I think I'm going to move to a less expensive place. So let's mm -hmm. get that all going. But also, it was also around, you know, heavy COVID. So I was like, I don't know that I want to move right now. But yeah. finally, I was like, you know what, okay. Yeah. I really want to make this change. So let's just look and see what's out there. And yeah. It's funny because 35 is your unconscious north node. And that is the gate. Oop, that is the gate of change, basically, of knowing, oh, where am I heading? I need a change. I need to step into change. But you might not know like what the change is gonna bring, like what feelings, what growth, but you just know you need a change. So learning about this energy, it's basically, I don't think you're slow to change. I talked about the fourth line so much in the foundation. It's almost like imagine you had an island of people in your full-time job. And now you have, you know, you left that job and you're in your own island and there might be little islands next to you. You need another stepping stone, another foundation in order to reach for the next step. Okay. So, so that it's could be the more reason. about right timing then. Yes. So you might have a desire, but waiting yeah. for the timing, waiting for you to feel secure enough in your next foundation in order to take the next step is so important so I wouldn't call it slow to change you have a lot of energy but it doesn't mean that you're not doing it fast enough it just means like am I we can even call it as non-human design terms am I self-regulating yeah right we need to what is the next thing like you said right now at the beginning maybe perhaps the most it feels right to have a part-time job maybe and then explore so I still have some sort of stability the fourth line needs some sort of stability yeah okay yeah it's true it's true and we can't rush the stability <laughs> we all want to rush I want to rush all the time and then your sixth line right now you're in the on the roof phase where it's kind of there's a bit of an aloofness, a detachment compared to perhaps the first 30 years of your life where you were trying things out. For me, I noticed I had a lot of like fear of missing out. Like I wanted to do all the things. And then as I enter my 30s, I'm like, oh, am I old? I use the am I old, but it's not really. It's just like my energy feels a lot more introspective. Like I want to sit back. I want to be on the roof and to come down from the roof to engage with people takes a lot of energy. So imagine your foundation being shaken right now, and you're also required to come down to the roof. 
that's a lot for like your body, your mind to handle. So it's okay if things take a little bit longer. Like how can you allow yourself to be stable? Come down when it feels safe. So you can engage with the people role model and then come back to your roof. You know, that is the energy that you are probably going through and, and feeling. But you're also at, I guess, the shadow or the beginning of coming down the roof. And I thought I was closer to being off the roof. No. Yeah, you're closer to coming off the roof, like down the roof. That's what I mean. You're close to that. So that's another transition you're going through. And transitions, again, it's like, oh, what is happening? It's almost like I'm coming back to engage with people. I'm coming back to like mingle around. It's like an itch. But your body is also relearning how do I do it from being on top of the roof for like 30 years. Pandemic. And I also want to try other things in my life. I'm an MG. And also, we haven't talked about your solar plexus yet. An undefined mm -hmm. solar plexus, where you amplify so much of people's emotions, even their fear sometimes from this area. You know, that's a lot to deal with for the sixth line. It's almost like, oh, so much change. So waiting for one thing to stabilize until you feel ready, it's okay. It's not that you're slow. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. All good things to uh, acknowledge and remember. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, I mean, it's easy when we're talking to people and like, yeah, we're right on time. And then when we're by ourselves, when we're in the... <laughs> In we moments like, oh yeah, we go back to that. And it's okay. It's a human experience. It's like, okay, maybe I'm influenced by energies. Maybe, you know, as a woman, I'm navigating through my different hormones because it lasts for the rest of our lives. No matter, you know, if we still menstruate or not, our hormones are gonna fluctuate and that's gonna cause that's gonna affect or tint how we feel about ourselves. And that's okay. But how do we support ourselves? And I feel like right now you're already doing such a beautiful job of connecting to the people you relate to, your peers, and also like taking the time to nourish your body with food and rest. And then knowing that something is coming, but also, okay, I have a say, no matter what happens, if they do decide to put me on a job or I can tank that interview and give myself more time, there's no right or wrong step. It's almost like, okay, I am prepared what are the, how do I take care of myself energetically, no matter what happens? Yeah. Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's what I've been trying to figure out. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that what this session is for? <laughs> 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 how is everything landing? How does it feel in your body as you hear about more aspects of your design? It's good. I mean, I mean, that's the thing that, you know, that's great about human design is that it goes into those details and gives you a sort of the scope of self or a map, obviously, of yourself. And for me, when I hear it and it lands, you know, I just, I can take a deep breath and really, one, be a little neutral, but to to some of the screams or frantic anxiety shoulds all of those things that could be neutral to that and sort of be and just be more discerning and but also give myself you know it's the you know like you can what are the words you know cut yourself some slack it's like mm. oh you know can be compassionate with yourself because you're like oh this is who I am like as the more and more I learn about human design I, I think I said it to my sister the other day it's like you know like this is this is who I am. This is how, or I've been saying this a lot to people about the safe world. It's like, this is, I got, you know, I would tell them, ask me questions. Ask yeah. me questions. Ask me yes or no questions. This is the, the best way for me to respond. And so it's a good way for you to communicate with me. And and then, you know, when things come up, like that feel very shadowy mm -hmm. or old habits that I'm just really not, not want to continue with, you know, I look at it from a human design perspective and, and realize sort of more like where it's placed and where it's coming from, you know, and that, you know, really everything is trying to protect me. It's sort of the same, like I was doing parts work coaching, which is great, you know, internal family systems. And it just, you know, there are all these parts of us that are, some of them are like managers and protect pro protectors and all they're doing these things and operating in these ways, but the overall goal is to protect, you know, the mind 
is where I, I, you know, like I would always make statements like the mind is a dangerous place. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it just wants to kill you. It wants to ruin you. It's just, it's just like, it will, it could totally mess you up if you rely solely on it. You know, like, you know, I'm always working to use the mind as a tool, Mm -hmm. but to speak from the heart and, and solar plexus, like bring it into the body more. And, you know, that's something I have to work on all the time, of course, because the habit from years had been leading with the head. Yeah. And the head is, I think it seeks to protect us. It seeks certainty. It's a beautiful awareness center, but it doesn't, it wants to control because it comes from fear. There's also a lot of anxiety energy in our head and our mind center, right? Because, you know, we, sometimes the anxiety anxiety helps us survive it helps you know evolve the collective consciousness the action yeah but you know when it comes to ourselves and because you have such an active head and mind you know how can you still stimulate that how can you instead of focusing this attention on like what am I doing in my life is this a good decision and old habits die hard but at least you're aware of it so you can be like okay go back into my body (laughs) like thank you for it like not denying that head and mind energy because it's such a big part of you and it's so powerful in helping others get certain about things helping others you know formalize their concepts you know your brain is beautiful and it's needed and it's going to serve the collective remember that it's to share with the collective so if it wants to be stimulated because any part that you have like constant energy it wants to be stimulated what can you chew on like you said you like using your 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 mind sometimes like murder mysteries are those fun I'm just throwing examples or you know that's kind of relaxing but also like stimulating board games or you know trying to figure out a puzzle you know those things could be fun and stimulating so that the mind is like oh okay I use my energy and then it doesn't become as loud the problem is when we think oh we should quiet the mind but if you have definition in your mind and head it's not going to quiet down it wants something to chew on but what kind of thing will be nourishing, fun, relaxing versus causing more anxiety? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think that's where creativity, music, the arts for me and crafts like that, because it's a place where it can explore and figure things out and, mm-hmm. and, and, and be honored for that versus like you know, I'm not so much annoyed with it in that, uh, in that state. <laughs> Sometimes they get really loud. <laughs> right? They get really loud. And yeah, yeah, I like that. Give it, give it something to chew on. And that's a, that's an interesting. <laughs> I pause because it's like, oh my gosh, everything just creates more work. And I, I'm so <laughs> place of being a little tired today yeah, or yeah. Having a little bit of a headache mm-hmm. today like I said and I don't usually have headaches but you know like it <laughs> feels clamp, my, my brain feels a little clamped today yeah um, yeah but it's also trying to process all of what we're talking and you know organizing make sense of it too right <laughs> right exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. for some days you know we don't have all the tools that we have we, we don't use them every day. Yeah. Sometimes it's just one tool. Other times it's like recognizing, yeah, I'm exhausted and maybe I would just watch Netflix. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing wrong with it. Just giving, like you said, giving yourself some slack. You know, we're not perfect. We're not always going to be in the high expressions. That doesn't mean we're better or necessarily aligned. Sometimes there are guidelines, you know, to teach us, oh yeah, you feel satisfied. This is where you want to keep going. Other times we will feel the whole spectrum of human experiences, regardless of how we take care of ourselves. We can be the most aligned person once we stepped into the outside world. <laughs> We're influenced by other people, by the collective and your emotional solar plexus, which is undefined. When you do take in the emotions of people, it can feel very charged. It can feel like almost you can feel it in your body as if it's yours. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, with your energy where you're aware of it. So releasing when it's possible and when it's not possible to release, how do you process? How do you either cry it out, go work it out at a gym, (laughs) talk to a friend, you know, 
those are options that we can follow when it feels right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, staying staying grounded helps because I know to just like let that go down that grounding cord. Give it, I give it a place to go, and I clear my energy as it comes up, and you know, connect to the source and to the earth, and just you know, allow it to channel through. And then you know, a lot of it's just like you know, sometimes it's quick to recognize it. Sometimes it takes a little longer. And you're like, oh, that's what's going on. <laughs> You know, that's not even my energy, you know, like, yeah. so, you know, using some of the tools I do know to kind of clear it because, yeah, it's, you know, other people's energy does not feel good in your space, you know, and it's it just brings more confusion and, and especially because of my, it's the solar plex, you know, and it's very emotional, you know, it can get me like even more confused and it's, 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 it's cause it. It also causes me a lot of sometimes physical issues pretty quickly. So is another reason why I really work to pay attention to it because I've gotten sick, you know, like being amplified in a group of people who are reacting really intensely and you're like, oh, wow, okay, that, that happened. It's almost when we feel it, when we, because amp- our open centers and defined centers are also designed to take an energy. But when we start running with that energy as if it's our own, that's when it's kind of like, oh, you know, when things are misaligned, like you said, feeling that's not my energy, feeling sick from it. And I think sometimes even when you're sharing your stories or the people that you're that are coming into your circle, coaching people, sometimes heavy things can come up. And it comes from a good place to want to support them, but also knowing, oof, okay, this is triggering something within me as well. So release, release, practices to release, but also feel like, okay, how do I hold myself if I I need extra support in in holding this whatever I'm I'm feeling, especially if we, you know, even turn on the news, it is so aggravating. Even though it's through a screen, we can feel everything that's happening. It's a human experience, beautiful, but also, oh, how do I regulate myself from this? So the rest of your energies are not trying to run around, trying to manage that energy or trying to get rid of it. Oh. how are you feeling what's coming up right now oh no, no just you know acknowledging that definitely and yeah no I'm just I'm trying not to pay attention to my head <laughs> drink water I was drinking yeah something else I just went back to water but you might water. just need to sleep <laughs> right now sleep a few hours after this let your unconscious yeah, yeah, digest I, I slept in but yeah, I think I'm just going to drink a lot of uh, extra fluids today to water to kind of clear the muscle relaxants out of my system and just stop taking them. Because I noticed the blurry eyes yesterday, but I didn't have the headache. But today I have the headache. So I'm like, OK, well, it's not getting any better. <laughs> Is there anything that you need right now? Do you want to wrap this up if you want to lie down or... Oh no, it's not. I, I, you know, I'm I'm getting a lot of information out of this that are that I'm appreciating. Yeah, no, I think we can continue. Yeah, we can keep going. And also, if you need to lie down, or if you want to turn off your camera and lie down and do it that way, we can also try that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I know you're trying to seek more clarity on purpose. How are you feeling about these themes right now? Uh, say that last part you yeah. mentioned that you're looking to find clarity purpose and career and relationships how are these things feeling right now after the information we've taken in well I feel like with with clarity definitely um shed some light on that just understanding more of myself and human design purpose you know that's a, such an interesting I know a, a big part of my search is l- searching for purpose mm. and 
And that's been, you know, a lifelong goal. And it's also been very confusing because, you know, people, the way people speak of purpose, sometimes it's often related to career or, you know, sort of divine mission. Some people say it's, it's, it's what you truly love to do. Like it's all over the place. So I feel like it's something I'm always chasing. And it's, I, I think also because there's not a, it's not consistently, things aren't consistently a yes. And part of that could be because I jump around to a lot of things. But, you know, when I look back right now, if I like look back on things that have, have been consistently either of interest or something that I've been doing, you know, definitely creativity plays a big part and working, serving people is a big part. I mean, and so those are two components, like over the last couple of months, you know, like I've done like astrology uh, reports about career and all these different things to just try and figure out like how to, how to narrow down, like, you know, who I am and what, what is truly going to bring me joy. And of course, in life, many things can bring you joy in different ways. But yeah, so part of it was, yeah, looking for a career. But, you know, so I'm working on that and like really like allowing more of my authentic self to come out is like, is a very important key mm -hmm. because it actually came up when we were talking about the roof. You know, you were talking about sort of coming down and going back up. And then there's a point where you'll be down. And I'll, I know that down will look more like me because, you know, the thing of, with working and having to sort of, you know, you could be yourself somewhat, but you're sort of in a work box, you know, like this, this is sort of what it's expected. You can figure it. I mean, I was in a company where I could sort of show up enough how I wanted to look and be somewhat, but I didn't. There was not a lot of trust with people because they proved that they couldn't be trusted for my full well my my well being in the way that I wanted them to. So I did what I I needed. They trusted me, and so we had a there was a relationship. But I felt like they they failed in many ways, and you know it's business, it's work, it's it's what it is, but. Now I am looking to land in myself, authentically be myself and put that out into the world. And so that's, I'm just, I'm looking for my components of what that is, how that feels so that I can show up as me moving forward. And if there's work that recognizes and appreciate that, appreciates that yes then I that's something I can say yes to if I have to just develop my own business in order to do both then yes I will do that uh, because that's become more important to me now than than you know like when I was younger it was important to me and then like in the middle not so much and now it's like it's the most important thing it just it just feels so much better in life you know like when you can just show up at who you are and find people to interact with on those those ways like when I when I and that's I think the one thing I like about the energy work and the coaching I show up as me you know mm -hmm. and I you know I'm joking I'm laughing with people and I can you know I can create trust and disarm a lot of their fears and it feels really good mm -hmm. and then the same thing with jewelry I make whatever I want although sometimes oh, this is very popular. Maybe I'll make that. But normally what I do is I think of a person and I make jewelry for people. I don't, I haven't even met them yet, but it's, you know, and it just comes out that way. And then the perfect person comes and buys it. You know, like I'll make this really long pair of earrings and this beautiful woman with this long neck comes and, and it's like there, I made them. I was like, I, I guess I made those for you. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, if you remember back at those moments, you know, the people will come for what you create yeah. and the trust. It sounds like, you know, during your previous job, it was something that was in some way broken and now you're rebuilding it 
within yourself and within the new foundation in your community. And, you know, as you were talking about, you know, getting ready to come down to the roof, it made me feel, it gave me the visual of, you know, how a butterfly before it becomes a butterfly when it's in the cocoon, you know, in when you're on the roof, you're basically cocooning, shedding the parts of yourself that you're like, you know what, I don't want to bring with me in my next phase. And then learning the things, building the things that very, nur- very nourish you, <laughs> nourish you a lot, and then bring it down. So in that way, you're kind of shifting also identities, almost like roles that you've played, that you're very aware of, you're the same person, but you're just like using it in a different environment. And that is, you know, I want to applaud you for that, because that's a huge shift and honoring. And I can see when you're talking about jewelry, coaching, talking to people, how your energy is starting to like, okay, you know, if we need a sign, not that we do of like where you're going next, I feel like you're very much already dipping your toes in it. Now it's a matter of like, how do I continue to build trust in it, designing jewelry and people coming to me and saying, you made it like you see made it specifically for someone that you've never met before. Like these things don't happen by accident. We're tapped into like a network of consciousness that we're not aware of. And we don't need to do any extra work to see how to make that happen because business strategy, that's what they teach us, right? Like, oh, ABC, get more clients like that. But when we tap into ourselves, you talk about looking for purpose, but what if you are your purpose? You expressing yourself is your purpose. I think purpose can be interpreted in so many ways and we seek it. And in a way, even your 38, 28, your channel of struggle, which is unconscious, there is a fear there, fear of death, fear of lack of purpose. (laughs) So it drives you in a way to do the things like find meaning as you do things, but it also doesn't mean that you don't have a purpose. It just means like keep expressing yourself. Your purpose is you. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds wonderful. (laughs) Yeah. And just every time the conditioning of like, (gasps) How are you going to get consistent sales? How are you going to make money? It's like, okay, I'll write it down. I know there are, you know, let me also build trust. I'm not being irresponsible right now, but also let me have fun. When you're creating, when you're coaching, this is, they talk about zone of genius, but that's basically where your sacral, where the rest of your centers are being shared with the rest of the world, because you have a lot of definition and it's here to be amplified by others, your wisdom, your desire, what you want for the community, your jewelry, that is to be shared. But first, take care of yourself. So you can share from a full cup. Yes. Do you also work with gene keys? I've tried, I've started incorporating them in advanced readings just to see when we go into gates, like the different spectrum where we navigate, but I wouldn't say I'm an expert at all. I'm just dabbling into it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, of course this definitely leads you to it. Human design definitely leads to gene keys. You kind of go back and forth as you, you know, it's you know, it's the type of thing, if you're into it, you just like, you want to absorb all the information, like, oh my God, what's it all mean? And how does it work? And it's the difference. And yeah, I had, I was just last week reading and listening to some information about it. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I mean, this is already fascinating enough. So, you know, like I was talking with someone who had the, I think the 2343 from the- yeah to the throat and I was like oh you complete me you bridge my gap you know or my split and so but but just like just noticing how it felt yeah because you know it's a curious thing like oh what 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 does it feel like and it was good and then like another friend of mine who has a defined emotional solar plexus 
you know, and how does that feel like when you're around someone who has it and yeah, you know, I find it all fascinating, but like those two, I was like, oh, okay, just to, just so that as I'm engaging with people, it's a, it's a new perspective of me to look from, from the sort of human design, you know, and even just like, you know, like I've done like some of the people in my family and, you know, you instantly have a better understanding of them because you're like, oh, this is a better way to speak with them. Yeah. Oh, this is a better way, you know, to do certain things. And just a slight little shift can make a, a, a very big difference. And and also just like the understanding you get when you work with people um, and interact with people. I haven't done all my friends, in, but I've done a few. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, finding people that bridge you can also be so supportive when you're processing things, when you're, you want to make a big decision or you're about to, and having someone with, you know, any of these channels could help. Yeah. But again, let yourself be guided by energy because it can look good on paper. You're like, oh, this person bridges me. And then like you meet each other. It's like, oh, we don't really vibe. (laughs) (laughs) So whoever you vibe with, just talk it out and see how it feels and just gather more data. It's almost like our energies, sometimes a lot of them, especially your sacral, it wants data. Give me something to respond to. Give me something to respond to. Sometimes it's a not yet. Sometimes it's a yes now. And then as you're in the middle, you need more data. You need more things like, should I keep going or not? Yeah, and that's good because I have to continue to practice and integrate that more of asking more frequently, I would say, you know, from the statement you just said, like, you know, I can, I'll do maybe a a few questions, but I haven't really worked with, you know, like I don't consistently ask if this is the right timing or, you know, like sort of the the follow-up questions. And I think maybe I'll, I'll make a list of them to, to just to remember, just a little reminder, like, Yeah, just to check in. It doesn't have to be complicated. I think so much of human design, we learn it mentally, right? We It's like, okay, this is the mechanics, this is how it works. But then the embodiment of it, the more we're sensitized to how each of our energies feel. Oh, the transits have our emotional solar plexus defined. Oh, okay, I'm feeling a bit heavy. Just noticing that is where the power lies. And then Mm -hmm. we start reacting and it just becomes like, it just reprograms us without knowing as we're aware. There's no... I think when I started, there's so much trying, like, how do I get the right invitations? How do I, you know, it's almost like, (laughs) because you want to make it work, but it also takes time to, okay, we just found out this about ourselves. Okay. Let our unconscious, let the world help guide us through this decondition and this recalibrating and yeah, checking in, not making it into a task. I'm very like aware of it because sometimes I can make things that are so supportive and fun for me not fun anymore when I make it into a task (laughs) right (laughs) so I'm like you know don't make it like you said oh more things to do it's not more things to do it's just tools that you can pick up and drop whenever as long as like oh is it supportive right now maybe that could be the most helpful question what is the most supportive right now to me does this support me do I want Do you have some chocolate or I need more water instead? (laughs) These simple choices make such a huge difference. And we think about big decisions in life, but sometimes we underestimate the little choices of like, maybe I should just lie down and take a nap. Maybe I should go for a walk. Those make a big impact too. That helps us build trust when we can take care of ourselves in the present. Yeah, yeah, good. I like that sort of building tool. No biggie. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, uh, just do that. No biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other questions that are coming up? Anything you're holding right now? Um, I would like to look at that that the sort of the heart G center area. So. I can't remember. So, so there's the will center and then the G center. Mm-hmm. And I know the G center, it's uh, sort of like identity 
and mm-hmm. self-love and sort of like that it's the center that holds us together it's also the sense the center of purpose so in a way you're unconscious <laughs> you know that you know what your purpose is you know you are here to do something you know where you're going unconscious in your body there's trust just like when we ask you about how does the flow time feel your body is like no <laughs> Yeah, that could be your identity center along with your sacral because they're connected. So your sacral, when it's responding, it's responding to, it's also connected to your spleen. It's responding to, okay, what is safe for me? What is intuitively, you know, good for me right now? Your sense of intuition and also, is that the direction I want to go? That's kind of the mechanics of how your sacral is connected. In the identity center, having it defined, there is a reliable sense of self and even people with defined centers get conditioned that we're not good enough, that, you know, we need to do more. And that also comes into other elements of your design, you know, the 4816 thinking that you need more skills or the 3828 thinking that you don't have purpose, lack of purpose, or that everything's really hard. Those energies can come into play and they become louder than your actual definition, which is like, when we talk about it, I can hear your G center so clearly when you're like, there is trust, there is trust. So how do we let the center keep shining, even when we do experience sometimes the shadow expression of the other energies? How can we just recognize them as shadow expressions? Like, oh yeah, there you go. Like my gate of skills think I don't have enough skills. I'll just try it out and do it. Or, oh, I'm feeling some tension in my 3828. Or, you know, I don't know what I'm struggling for. I feel like this is a struggle, but also... You have the feel, you have the awareness of what is worth fighting for in your life. What is important to you? Doesn't mean things need to be necessarily hard, but if there's any hardship, you will be able to navigate it with this energy. Mm-hmm. If anything, you're here to inspire people. <laughs> people with the channel of struggle, they show us like what is worth fighting for? How can we fight for it? How do we stick with ourselves? How do we cultivate trust in ourselves? I'm just throwing like random themes that are coming up in our conversation, right? Yeah. 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 All of very, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the 4521. Yes. That is also known as the voice of the eagle. It connects your desires to your throat. And this is all about the 21, the gate of the hunter gatherer, mm-hmm. of the hunter, huntress. It's all about control how do i bring in my resources how do i make money how do i spend money Correct. and 45 call it the money line right yes the money line yeah and then the 45 is like okay how do i distribute what i how do i distribute what i've um gathered how do i use it how can i direct my community on yeah this is this is how to make money and you have so many ways of bringing possible income It's a matter of allowing yourself to pour into that and trust and then let that build up so you can guide others into the material plane, into, you know, finding clarity or direction within themselves. Like I could see how much you were lighting up just talking about it. I can't even imagine you in a session guiding somebody who's looking for guidance. You will help them open and see, you know, what are their desires? What can they bring forth? What are their skills? What is their direction? That's something you're really good at providing for others because it's, you know, you're using it for the collective, but also within yourself, it's there. You might not see it or feel it. Your brain might not be able to interpret it, but it's there. That sense of trust and wholeness is with you. It's just a matter of like, how can I lean back to that a little bit more? When the shadow sides of the other energy are like, hello, (laughs) screaming. It's like, okay, I recognize you, but also I trust myself. Yeah, I love the, you know, the the overlying feeling is there's nothing wrong. <laughs> you know, you just yeah, you're just figuring out you're figuring out what what you're choosing and all of that, but there's nothing wrong. It's just yeah. It's just sometimes we go through slump and we feel like the world is so gray and dark, and it does feel like that. <laughs> but 
there's always a way through we can ground into ourselves and you know having the channel of money you probably don't like working for others (laughs) (laughs) you do not like that if anything you're here to carve your own way so the fears that come out from that recognize it do I have the skills to do it heck yeah you have the 4816 you can perfect you can hold on you any skill you picked up you can be a master of it if you choose to if it feels good for you you're good at responding to whatever comes into your aura like you have those skills if you take away you know maybe the the cons of your previous work environment how were you responding to things were you capable were you respected So imagine yourself being in an environment that wasn't 100% aligned and you were still so capable. What would happen when you go into something that you're very excited, that you have all that sacral energy, you're recognized, you're like radiating. Do you think you'll be capable to deal or handle whatever comes your way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was a good training ground. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. You are capable. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. Because I mean, you know, that doubt, you know, when the doubt comes up and I I learned to turn doubt into curiosity and that that has been helping a lot. But yeah, and, and, and it tells me it's a gray, rainy, windy day. And... I'm not feeling that great. So maybe this afternoon I do just take it easy and and rest my eyes and drink water, or whatever I need to do to take care of myself. And I can worry about tomorrow later. I don't have to worry about it at all. But yeah, that brings a, a nice stillness. Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm so glad. And also something that I don't know why it's coming up, maybe because I've been going through my own dental plane. When you're uncomfortable with anything physical or even thing, we don't have the capacity to figure things out, <laughs> to figure our lives out, because we're so busy trying to take care of the present, which is why I always bring it back to like, just how can you honor yourself right now? Like you said, taking a nap, maybe that is the most powerful thing you can do because tomorrow if you feel better you might get more inspiration you have the capacity to deal with the harder things and the bigger questions but right now when we're in pain when like we're not able to eat the things we want to eat like when our our head are hurting like you don't have the capacity to go save the world (laughs) so permission (laughs) to just ah, listen to your body and nourish it (laughs) whatever it needs (laughs) yeah that does Yes thank you so much thank you (laughs) yes it was really wonderful talking with you and working with you and I also just wanted to to point out I really I did enjoy the um, the journal that I purchased uh going through it you did a great job putting it together and you know really good information and yeah oh thank you so much I hope that's supportive you know that's it what do we need right now what felt good what did it and then we look back and we realize, oh, we've done a lot of things that we weren't doing before. We were able to feel more grounded, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.